All right, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the final webinar in the AppMaker to AppSheet transition series. Uh, I have a few guests with me today. Uh, we have Christian Schalk, uh, who a few of you probably are familiar with already. Christian, if you'd like to say a quick hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, happy to be here and happy to be talking about AppMaker and AppSheet. Excellent. Thanks, Christian. And we also have a very special guest with us today, uh, Rich Ellis, who's a product consultant on the AppSheet side. Rich, if you'd like to say a quick hello. Hey, everyone. Glad to be here. Excellent. And uh, Rich, um, just for context for everyone, if you've been joining the AppSheet uh, office hours, he was with us during our webinar session yesterday, and I'm happy to post a link in um, any of the threads uh, to showcase some of the material he presented there as well. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, a uh, quick, uh, I hope everyone is safe and sound right now. I know the world has changed a lot since we held our last uh, App Maker to App Sheet webinar series, and we're all working from home now. Um, if you hear some noise in the background, please forgive us. Uh, we're all working out of our houses trying to navigate uh, this new space. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Christian, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. So uh, we put together the agenda for today. Basically, we'll be talking a little bit about plans and pricing, um, and then we're going to be revisiting some of the topics we uh, discussed in some of our earlier uh, webinars. We'll hopefully uh, dive a little bit deeper. Um, so this is we'll be talking about some of the UI concepts, how to build desktop UIs versus like a mobile first UI. Ooh, Christian, are you there? I think we might have lost Christian's uh, other to also for, for free to uh, give us your questions. We go. Oh, sorry. I'll keep talking if that if that helps. Oh, you're good. Um, you're good. We can, can hear, hear you again. Now? Yep. Um. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> sorry about that. Um. Yeah. Like like you just said, we're all doing our best working from home. So every now and then the internet <laughs> might uh, go. But usually I'm pretty good at home. So I'll just keep going. So anyway, yeah, we put together some uh, different topics. Uh, some of it is revisiting some of the uh, previous uh, content uh, that we had touched in, on on some of the other webinars. And then we also want to take some time to kind of really dive into a little bit more of the the key differences between AppSheet and AppMaker. So it's very clear from a lot of the folks who are <clears throat> transitioning over from AppMaker that they can kind of uh, still line up the the respective features and understand kind of like what what uh, AppSheet has to offer. Okay, so let's dive into it. And Jennifer, I will go ahead and let you go. Perfect. Uh, so a couple of things we just wanted to ensure were really clear um, for this particular group uh, to help address some questions we received around yeah. plans and pricing. So for those of you who are experienced AppMaker users and are active customers using AppMaker within your uh, Google subscription plan, AppSheet product is being offered at a very special rate where we've created what's called our hybrid pro plan plus, um, which is a variation of our pro plan plus a couple of enterprise features. And with that, um, you're able to access the pro plan on AppSheet with access to your Google Cloud SQL uh, instance. Uh, I, it's my understanding that a number of AppMaker customers were told to switch over to Cloud SQL, and so we wanted to make that um, information, or that database rather, available on AppSheet at no additional cost. If you are in need of a promo code to access this, please feel free to reach out to our team. We'll be showcasing a slide at the very end uh, that contains information on how to access your unique promo code. It does require account validation and takes roughly one to three business days to um, to create. There is uh, the ability to go above and beyond the pro plan that we offer for this special um, the special case, and that would be more of our what we call our business subscriptions or enterprise plans, which do include certain elements of governance and added security features. Uh, please speak to a member of our sales team, and if you have questions about this or need to be connected, we're happy to put you in touch with them. Excellent. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, take this slide. Um, so just kind of some high level uh, bullet points here for the stuff that we'll be diving into shortly. So I'll be talking about like AppSheet views, how they compare to AppMaker widgets, uh, discussing some of the key differences. So we'll be touching on expressions. Uh, then we'll go into how to build like the desktop UIs. We have some demos that I'll be able to walk through. 
Um, and then we'll spend some time on localization. So I'll start off with you know, reminding folks how you can do it in AppMaker, and then we'll step into the, the, the process for AppSheet. All right. So if you recall back in our earlier uh, first webinar, um, I, I had this slide more or less where I essentially you know, described the, the primary differences between AppSheet views and, and AppMaker uh, widgets. Uh, so if you recall, the AppSheet views are essentially pre-coded. They have essentially the UI already encoded into them, and then you operate or you customize via the property editors for these specific types of views. Whereas with AppMaker, you are dealing with a much lower level sets of widgets, and then you have like the property editor for the respective widget that you still can customize. Um, so that's it at a high level. Of course, we can dig into a little bit further. Um, so first off, and as you probably know, or hopefully know, there is no design canvas you know, in AppSheet. So you, you deal essentially with those pre-canned uh, AppSheet views, but then you have uh, the customization, the property editors where you can go in and change kind of like the, the behaviors of all the, the, the different things. You can also string them together. Uh, and then also when we get into the dashboard, you can actually create essentially kind of like a, more of like a desktop view. Um, also, I can't stress this uh, enough because this has come up a fair amount, and, and I know a lot of cus uh, customers on AppMaker, they're, they're used to having their own CSS. So uh, we, the AppSheet itself did not have the ability, or you don't actually add like actual CSS, but encoded within the, the property editors, you can change the look and feel. So it's inherent within the, uh, the, the view types themselves. Um, also, as you know, AppSheet views are mobile first, but that doesn't mean that you can't build a full desktop uh, environment. And uh, so in that sense, um, you have like the, essentially kind of a special type of view. It's called the dashboard view. And we'll walk through kind of like a demo of that, but that's where you get the ability to mix and match, and add different type of children views into a parent dashboard view. And so that's where it's like, there's like a, um, like, for example, with AppMaker, if you know, like AppMaker widgets are all very hierarchical. You can insert widgets in multiple ways. And, and so you come to uh, expect that with kind of like how you're building up your UIs inside of AppMaker. Um, the only case this is true for AppSheet is when you're using a dashboard view. Um, and then in some of the other kind of bits and features that we had with the AppMaker views, like this notion of a page fragment doesn't necessarily exist other than like this kind of special case with the dashboard view where you can kind of treat like one of the children view as kind of like a page fragment. Uh, and also, if you recall AppMaker, we have this whole pop-ups uh, framework. Um, since AppSheet itself is like a mobile first kind of a, of a UI technology, you don't necessarily have the the need, or it's not really expected to have kind of a pop up window in your in your mobile UI, and so that's essentially not available inside of AppSheet directly. Another kind of important thing to cover is uh, expressions, and so th this is where there's kind of at a high level you can kind of think of these as similar features between AppSheet and AppMaker, uh, but but there, there are some key differences. First off. Um, just a bit on AppSheet expressions. AppSheet expressions are the way that you can actually encode logic within multiple areas within AppSheet. Uh, so this can be like, for example, if you wanted to uh, create a logical expression such that you, you will actually show like a, a particular view or you want to create a condition for a slice or a query of data, like maybe have it only show certain records that match like a certain uh, email, for example. Um, actions and workflows, essentially the little bit more of the logical uh, uh, engine behind AppSheet, the, you're going to be using um, expressions. And, and also expressions are not necessarily like uh, the, always the easiest things to do, but fortunately AppSheet does provide like an expression, expression, <laughs> expression assistant that gives you like a lot of different examples and you can build up the expression and then test it on the fly there. Um, switching over to AppMaker expressions, typically um, the one easy thing, if you're already a JavaScript, uh, if you're familiar with JavaScript, uh, AppMaker expressions are pretty straightforward because you can rely on essentially evaluating like the different expressions uh, just using uh, JavaScript syntax. Uh, there's also the special uh, app symbol, which allows you to tap into the uh, server-side objects. Uh, so in, that's essentially kind of a, at a high level. Uh, on the AppMaker side, evaluate JavaScript, you have direct access to some of these uh, server-side objects directly. Um, but yeah, the, the use cases are, are largely the same when you're deciding different things. One thing I should also mention is that regex, regex is not uh, directly supported within AppSheet directly, um, but yeah, you can still get around it by just uh, encoding your, your um, expressions. All right. 
Um, I mentioned this a few times, so here's like some screenshots. This is actually a screenshot of one of the uh, samples, a sample template uh, that you could actually play with. And so what this, the, the notion here is like, this is essentially a, a working version of like how you would build a larger, more like desktop type of a UI. So if you look on the left here, there's different child uh, views, like a chart, you know, and then like a table and things like that. Um, so let me just show you the actual application. And Rich, so while Christian's is, pulling this up, um, can you talk a little bit about like what a view type is, um, since Christian has kind of that preliminary screen open in the editor? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so for everyone on the call, view types are are basically your your CAN templates, right? So they they've been developed by AppSheet developers that align with industry standards that that you know are the that's basically best practices for for a design of a certain type, whether it's a deck view, a table view, or you know the charts or, or a detail view. Uh, one of the benefits of AppSheet is you don't need to spend a bunch of time piecing together or modifying views, um, and you simply just click one or the other, and AppSheet will automatically figure out, basically based on the data that it's connected to what it should look like and give you some minor abilities to tweak uh, that display. Right, so you can still customize these views if you would like, but you have a, Rich, what you said, a pre-can template that you can start with. Correct, yep. Very cool, thank you. All right, Christian. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's great. Thanks for jumping in. Um, I, I actually, you know, I can see the value definitely of having like these pre-can views, because like, you know, in the years of working with AppMaker, um, creating very customized views can take a lot of time. And uh, if you just need a, a, an application quick to get up and running uh, without really having to worry, and it's especially to be mobile friendly, because in AppMaker, you can build mobile uh, friendly uh, UIs, but you kind of have to know what you're doing. You have to understand some of the more complex uh, concepts, such as the CSS Flexbox, and then also how to work within the different uh, uh, like panel widgets and things like that. With AppSheet, it's actually quite nice. It gives you, you know, these things, they're already good to go. Uh, there's a little bit of trade-off, obviously. You can't just design your entire custom UI exactly as you expect. And so that's something that you kind of just have to consider when, you, when you're moving into AppSheet. Um, yeah, so just getting back to this. To, to, where, kind of, oh. to kind of add on that, that real quick, too. Um, one of the, the, the benefits, too, to these, these can views is that the more complex your apps uh, that you develop, the easier it is to make changes to all the views at once. Say you want to add a new field to your app, right? So instead of manually having to go through every single view and add that, the app sheet will automatically just add that automatically to your view uh, for all instantaneous. So you can make, you know, you can add a new field within a couple minutes instead of having to go back through every single view and add a new field. Or, you know, for example, if you're going to add an action to a view, right? You could just set up the action, tie that action to the table, and then all the views naturally will show that um, as a result of that. So there's a there's a good you know positive uh, feedback loop in that sense. Uh, the more complex your apps get. Awesome, thank you, Rich. That's a really great point. So I was going to also show like for example when you work with the dashboard specifically, you see these view options. You can actually or select the child views that will appear. And so if I wanted to add another, you know, particular page or whatever uh, view, I guess I could do that. And then I can specify the, the size and stuff. Um, and then that will basically get locked into the, the parent dashboard view. Now to actually see this, um, like right now on the right side, the preview window here, um, you don't really see it until you actually start to open up into a, um, a bigger, uh, viewing screen. So I clicked on the little uh, icon to open up the app in the large screen view here, uh, as opposed to the, the narrow uh, mobile view. So now we're looking at the different, um, you know, child widgets or the child views, sorry, <laughs> uh, where you have like the different uh, elements here. You have a chart on the right side and things like that. And then um, there's a little bit more to this UI. So if I go through and select some of these records, you can see they can be fairly intricate on a lot of the uh, the UI content here. And so to build this kind of UI in AppMaker would take a lot more work. You'd have to go through and define the, the dimensions and things like that. So uh, that's that's one thing that I that I uh, appreciate with that app. You can actually jump to it fairly quickly to be building these types of uh, rich types of UI that can also serve in a desktop type of environment. Um, and any as, other uh, as, comments? Yeah, um, as, as Christian kind of showed you with that mobile view, 
all views are, are automatically uh, dynamic. Uh, they scale with your device. So you don't need to spend extra time configuring views for each device. AppSheet just um, is, is built on that ability to automatically uh, adjust the views based off that device. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't show the tablet view, but there's the tablet as well. So you kind of under you can see it in action how it's adjusting to the different sizes and stuff like that. Um, cool. I'll go ahead and move on unless you had any other comments. But yeah, this is the factory inspection uh, uh, template uh, sample uh, that anyone can play with today if they like. Right. So moving right along, let's jump into localization. So localization, first off, let me just kind of do a quick review with AppMaker. Um, so you probably have done, or depending uh, what your needs are, you might have done some uh, localization for your AppMaker apps. Um, so typically the steps you go through is like, first off, you go into the application settings in AppMaker, you can select the app language. And so there's a whole you know, wide list of different languages that you can set up or you can specify. And then at that point, AppMaker will automatically localize the widgets, the various widgets, date box, maps, charts, uh, et cetera. And then essentially all of the, um, the, the, the automatic generated uh, content or like text and stuff like that, especially form validation messages, uh, they will be in that language that you specify. However, it is up to the developer to uh, localize kind of any, any and all kind of just custom text uh, that appears in your UI. So that's something that's a little bit more on the uh, left, kind of like depending on like you know, your needs for your particular application. Now switching over to AppSheet, AppSheet also has the ability to kind of, you can actually set the locale for the underlying spreadsheet that you can base your app off as you're building it. And then AppSheet will be able to pull that into it and then uh, adjust accordingly. Um, so in that sense, you know, the currency, date, time, number, percent, things like that, these will all be uh, formatted appropriately based off of the locale coming from the actual underlying uh, spreadsheet. All right. Um, let's see, what was else we're going to talk about? Yeah, you just editor will automatically latch the, the, the locale. Um, the other thing that's important to know is that within localization is that there is a, a tab called localize, which is under, it's one of the tabs uh, that you can get to from the UX uh, tab on the left. And that's where you go through all the system text uh, prompts. And that's where you can pick whatever language uh, you want. Now it's still up to you to, to define like the actual words uh, in whatever language. So it, on, the, on the positive side, this means you can customize it exactly the way you want it, as opposed to getting like a built-in kind of canned uh, wording, which may or might not uh, fit your kind of immediate or like local, local region. Um, but that being said, yeah, it, it, you would have to go through and, and edit like a, I don't know exactly the number, but yeah, it, it's a fairly long list that, but you know, I think it's what maybe you, you know, <laughs> uh, like 30 or something like that of the system text. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 25, 25-ish. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, so just to quickly show you a demo. So, uh, there is this uh, demo here, which basically walks through and explains, you know, you know, the concepts of how to, to localize an application. So let me start off with the data. So first off, I'll go to the data here. I'll look at the source sheet under underneath it. Um, and so as you can see, the, the the data itself is already in. In this case, we're using Spanish as the um, as the example. Um, and so typically what you could start off by going into the spreadsheet settings and then selecting what locale, and then you can set that up. And then from then on, that's when you go back into, into app sheet and then be able to uh, take that locale setting and that will kind of direct how app sheet itself starts to render the different uh, uh, um, UI elements. Uh, and then as I also showed in the screenshot, the, um, the localized, page right here, which is one of the, the tabs at the top on the UX section. Uh, this is where you can go through and uh, put all of your, your customized uh, prompts in, in what language you want. And also the, the fonts as well. So because like, you know, obviously English text, you don't have the upside down uh, question mark and things like that. Um, anything else you want to add on, on your side, uh, Rich or Jennifer, on this part? Yeah. Uh, one th oh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say um, one really cool uh, piece of this localization um, capability is that, and this speaks to kind of AppSheet in a broader sense, is we have a very active AppSheet creator community. For those of you that haven't been introduced yet, there is a hyperlink uh, you can click on in your question box that will direct you 
direct you there. Uh, but we have a, a number of instances where individuals may have their headquarters for their company based out of like, let's say France, for example. So French would be their default language, but they're also trying to build applications for a different part of the world uh, where they need a different language, but they want to verify and trust that they're using appropriate terminology, they're getting the, the context right, all of that. And so they're actually leveraging the power of the AppSheet community to be able to ensure um, that what they're doing is appropriate and accurate which I think is really cool. And Rich actually has a great example of an application that we're going through this process with right now. Um, it, separately, it's part of the efforts we're doing to help combat um, the COVID-19 crisis we're facing, but we have a great crowdsourcing effort taking place. So if anybody wants practice or wants to contribute to that, I'd be happy to send information along to you. Yeah, on, the, on that same note too, you're not just limited to another language, you can also set up a table in your app in Google Sheets and you can have multilingual apps where wow. you allow users to select different languages and then you basically, in your localized settings, in your views, in your view names, you have those those uh, those texts that, that they look up in a table in your, uh, in your back end and they populate whatever language the user has selected in their user settings. So, okay. um, yep. Cool, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. I, I was starting to think about that as we, as we were discussing that. It's like, okay, cool, um, awesome. All right, I'll go back to the slides here. And, uh, let's see, there we go. Um, so one other thing that, that came up in the uh, some, some of the feedback, and uh, also this was mentioned uh, in the previous webinars, a little bit of kind of people wanted to get their heads around a little bit better on how AppSheet does relations. And so just I'll do a quick uh, cursory review and then I actually have like uh, an example where I can kind of walk through a little bit more uh, more deeply. So first off, uh, the um, app, AppSheet, AppMaker, they both support relations between data tables or essentially models for AppMaker speak. Um, now the way you do it in AppSheet, if you haven't done this yet, is like basically it boils down to you add a column of type ref. Uh, that's actually referring to another table specifying like essentially what the name is. So for example, if I have a employee table and that table might have like many records or rows that are uh, joined to like a department table, then I could actually create like a, a column in my employee table and name it uh, dep. DEPT for the department, and then set the type of that column to be REF, ref. Um, and then one of the things that you'll find with AppSheet is that um, it also does some of this work for you automatically. And so, for example, I'll show a demo in a second, but I can take uh, an AppMaker app, um, I can then go into the, uh, the deployment menu and then export out the data from the application into a spreadsheet. And then I can go into AppSheet and then generate a new application and have it read the relationships and then automatically create a ref column that will link the two or, or whatever number of, of tables that you have. Uh, and and the, then you'll essentially be able to preserve that relationship. Now, I, there are some little, little uh, small little tweaks uh, I found that I had to do this. And this was just kind of on my own working, but I worked with one of the uh, product consultants as well uh, with the AppSheet folks. Uh, and we found out like, you know, you can actually get it done, but there's one or two things that I'll show you that you just kind of be uh, aware of. Um, and also this, this automatically picking up of references and sheets also works with uh, foreign keys and SQL databases. Um, so anyway, let's uh, talk about it. So what I'll show you in a demo uh, fairly quickly is that um, I'll go into an app maker app that I built. It has like a simple many uh, one to many relationship. Uh, in this case, I'm using the depth and employee example where I have like different departments and I have different employees that correspond to those departments. Um, and I'll step through, export it, and then go in. I'll do some tweaks actually to the, the exported sheet, um, just two little minor tweaks, and then I'll go into AppSheet and generate a ready to run uh, application. So without further delay, let's op open up my AppMaker example. All right, so here is essentially a basic, basic kind of uh, master detail or one to many application that I showed in the screenshot. And I actually um, previewed it to load some data. So I have some kind of like some example data all ready to run. Um, so like for each you know, department, 
it will actually drive the relationship of the, the essentially the, the relation data source, as you can see down in the lower part here. All right, so so far so good. Now, if I want to take that and bring it over to AppSheet, what I can do is I can go over to the, um, let's go to the deployments area. I can pop open a deployment, and then there's this important uh, option down here. It says export data, right? So this opens up the uh, export data facility, and you select which uh, deployment you want. And so if you know about AppMaker deployments, you already have a built-in preview deployment, which is whenever you click the, the, the preview button, that's like the default. So I'm going to select that one because that's where I put my example data. I'll click export. And so now it's going and filling up a brand new sheet with some data. And it also preserves the relationship. So let me just show you the spreadsheet. All right. So here is the spreadsheet containing the data that I just uh, placed uh, from the from the application. Um, so first off, I'm going to tweak it just a tad. I noticed that when I Ooh, Christian, I think we lost your sound again. But it looks like it's got something cool. Christian, can you hear us? the detail table as the furthest left um tab in my spreadsheet christian christian you, you've cut out a little bit can you repeat that last hopefully that you... my didn't uh, disappear for a second okay okay there you go i think you're all set. yeah can you hear um i'll, I'll, okay, I'll do my best uh i noticed that yeah yeah, I, I can hear you. Uh, again, feel free to uh, just let me know if that happens again. I, I noticed I, I lost the connection for a second, but I'll just keep uh, going through here. So, so what I'm doing is doing a, a quick um, update to the columns, and I find that just setting like the the name of the actual table itself and then putting ID really kind of clarifies to AppSheet, so then it knows to go in to this particular uh, sheet and then look up the references and then create the relationship. So now I'll go back into AppSheet. I'll just use this one here. And I'll go to my apps. I'm going to generate a new app. I'll just call it And here I just select the the freshly created uh, spreadsheet. All right, so now we have our spreadsheet here. We have two views um, and we have one uh, data table. Now, that's okay for our starters. I mean, I can actually edit the furthest leftmost uh, sheet uh, in my spreadsheet, but I still want to uh, pull in the depth, the departments, right? Fortunately, there's a little add a table for depth. Oh, really quickly, let me show you the, 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 the columns. So you'll notice here we have this depth column here and it's of type number. Um, now, when I go back and add the depth um, table here, it's going to go ahead and then recognize that there's a relationship between these two objects, and then it's going to go back and do some updates. So, for example, first off, um, I'll go back to my, um, let's see here, yeah, my employee table. Let's take a look at the columns, and notice here the depth is now of type ref, so that's now pointing to the new depth table that I just created. And if I go here into my depth table, you'll see also that there is this uh, reverse reference. So refs rows equals employee depth. So that's kind of like the, the reverse linkage between the two. And then also more importantly, notice here on the UI. So I can go in the UI here and click on any one of these parent uh, uh, rows and it pulls in the related employees. So we, Without having to really do any work, I was able to preserve those relationships um, uh, pretty easily. And so, so yeah, that was basically what I wanted to show. Uh, as long as you know kind of like what you're doing, it's pretty easy to start to preserve some of these relationships. So I definitely recommend, you know, uh, experimentation in that. Um, this is like the quick way. Uh, you can always do manually. You just go through and define your your columns such that you know you can set the ref type. You just have to make sure that you have the naming uh, lining up correctly. 
Perfect. Uh, so two things I wanted to uh, mention really quickly, Christian. So uh, Rich, um, thank you for being able to join us this morning. He has to actually jump off to help uh, a customer right now. So we're, we're going to let him go. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning, Rich. And he's available on our community to answer questions if anybody has them. Um, so please feel free to reach out to him or ourselves if you'd like there. And two, I, I just wanna really quickly highlight something that I think might have gotten lost in what just took place that's really, really powerful. And that's the fact that when Christian said, oh, I'm just gonna create an app really quickly, and you saw those dots on the screen processing, um, he actually, he, he made an app that, he started an app uh, within a matter of seconds instead of a matter of weeks or months. And he was able to do that because of the way his data was structured and because of the power of the AppSheet platform. So, so just for context there, um, there was a lot happening that seemed very simple, um, but it, it's a very, very powerful, um, very powerful, powerful, excuse me, action that just took place. Cool, yeah, oh, cool, awesome. So let's see, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we're doing all right. I'll go ahead and uh, move on to the next uh, sections here. All right. So we'll talk about uh, preview and deployment. Just kind of uh, first discuss the uh, the concepts. Um, let's see, do I want to? No, that's fine. So in general, deployment is kind of similar to AppMaker, but uh, there's some key differences that you'll also kind of want to uh, take stock of. Uh, so just to step through the deployment uh, process in AppSheet, uh, first off, there is this kind of utility, it's like a handy utility that gives you kind of like a, a review of your application to see if it's in a state that you want to go ahead and deploy it for, officially deploy it to, for your users. Um, notice in this screenshot, I have like, you know, warnings, like, you know, app description and et cetera, things like that. Um, these are minor, but if you actually have some more serious problems, those would show up as red and, and then um, you can still override it and deploy something, but uh, yeah. Um, so that's a nice utility, but at the bottom, as you do your deployment, you can actually say, okay, I wanna go ahead and continue and deploy my application. And so this is where your app essentially changes state from a prototype into a deployed state. Um, and then you also have the ability to return back to the quote, prototype state. Um, and this is where I kind of like to draw the distinction between AppSheet deployment versus AppMaker deployment. So as you know, with AppMaker, when you click deploy, there's a number of things that's going on. You're creating essentially a new um, web app in the app script runtime that you're deploying as an HTML web app. So essentially your application itself, all of the logic, all the UI, all the, you know, essentially everything that comprises your app gets packaged up and deployed to the app script runtime as a HTML web app. Um, so you actually do have like a transfer of files that occurs. That's not how AppSheet works. AppSheet is just basically designating a, an application as being in a deployed state, um, but it, it, it's it's merely just kind of designating the, the particular state of the application. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. And then of course you can go through and do some other things as well, um, like returning back to the prototype state. And this kind of also brings me up to an important concept uh, between AppMaker and AppSheet, where you have, like, for example, with AppMaker, you have this uh, revisions feature, where, like, every time you're doing updates to your application, it's saving, you know, on a timely basis, you know, every minute or so, like, any types of updates or, you know, significant updates, it will kind of keep a running log of all the deltas that you're doing with the app, you know. And similar, in a similar fashion, AppSheet essentially does the same thing. This is where you can go into under app sheet, there's like a, a menu on the left, manage and, and select the uh, versions tab. And you can see essentially the same type of things that are going on. You're doing like different operations on the application in app sheet. And then you can actually go in further and you can, it's not shown in this screenshot, but you can actually select a particular uh, update or a particular uh, a version and um, deploy or copy that particular version to be the current version that you want to have uh, for your users. And that's similar to how AppMaker. So for example, in AppMaker, I can go through and select a particular revision and say, yes, I want to deploy this revision, which was maybe a few iterations old, or I want to, um, you know, whatever, you know, you, you can save it off for later. And so it, there's a pretty similar functionality here. Um, this is, <laughs> I'm not an expert at, on, on all the stuff that, that's going on on the AppSheet side, but uh, yeah, I think for the most part, they, they line up fairly, fairly well. So if you have any other comments, Jennifer, you're <laughs> feel free to jump in. No, I, I think that's great. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, we'll move on. 
So some other comparisons uh, between AppSheet and AppMaker, just to kind of uh, bring home kind of like the concepts of like where they, they're, they're similar and then also highlight some of the things where they're different. So as we touched on before, you have this um, design canvas environment in AppMaker. Um, so that functionality, that kind of a canvas type or custom UI is, is different, obviously, with the view types. They're the pre-can, preset UX view types. So that's something that's the first kind of thing you just need to, to kind of understand. And once you get through and start to get better at customizing the different view types, and you start to see like what it gives you or what it has to offer. Um, now, again, this is not like, if, you, if your requirements are such that you need to have a very precise UI, uh, and that's like something that, that you'll need to have, um, that's where it's like, yeah, App, AppSheet may not be able to give you exactly, you know, pixel by pixel the UI that you want, but that's where you want to say, okay, you can look into doing uh, apps using some of the other Google technologies, um, even if you have the resources to build something straight out into App Engine, for example. Um, same thing with the custom look and feel. So typically with, uh, with AppMaker, as you know, it has Google material essentially programmed into it as a default. Now you can also just have like a generic or plain look and feel with AppMaker, or you can also have your own custom CSS and load that into your UI. So you have a, quite a bit of flexibility, but the complexity is also you have to understand CSS and work with that. And I, and I recall from the earlier days in, in AppMaker, some of the, some of the uh, CSS uh, uh, concepts were a little bit over some of the uh, citizen developers. Or, <laughs> uh, so in this sense, having like a easy to use color picker and things like that, where you can go through and select the different views and then go in and open up the tab where you can start to customize the UI. That's actually a, a pretty thing, pretty easy thing to do. Um, let's see. Oh, the directory, being able to access like directory information. Um, so that's something that has come up. Like for example, most of the uh, internal apps at Google that were built on AppMaker, they typically have kind of like an interface to um, one of our internal APIs that allows you to fetch uh, HR information. And there's also some external examples that are, are, are packaged with AppMaker that allows you to tap into the directory service. So there is this, like, as you know, the directory API or directory service, and you have a special directory model. That functionality is not in AppSheet. Uh, so typically what that has been recommended so far is to implement it in a tabular format in the sense that you have a custom table that can represent your directory. And so there are examples of this working okay. This is an area that we're also looking into continuing to smooth out like the differences. So for example, in the last webinar, I did create kind of like a proof of concept where um, I was able to essentially make a webhook call from an app sheet application have it call an app script function uh, and have it call the do post method of an app script uh, function. And then it, within that function, I was able to then call the directory API and then do a query against a particular argument that was sent to it and then store that off in a database. So I, I might be able to bring that example out where there's also various other ways to do some of this stuff to kind of work around this. Um, but yeah, this is definitely an area that, that has received interest and uh, attention. So I, I expect that we'll be working collectively within the AppSheet team and then just Google in general to address this thing. And I will um, also add too that um, we're, we'll share a resource page at the end of this presentation, um, but we have a number of sample applications that have we've been able to recreate based on the AppMaker sample applications or template, uh, templates, excuse me, that had been made available previously that showcase features such as this directory info access. Uh, and I would highly encourage everyone to check those out uh, to see how we've reproduced uh, the same functionality or very similar functionality in AppSheet as well. Yep, cool. And then um, the other things, the expressions, I think we covered expressions a fair amount, like you know, expressions in AppSheet are like spreadsheet formulas, AppMaker are essentially JavaScript, but they also have the app symbol. Uh, for the specific uh, objects that you get on the server. And then localization, I think we walked through that fair enough, a fair amount, so I think we're probably good to go. Um, some final comparisons. So as you may, if you caught our last webinar, um, I did walk through, actually we've done it like more than once, I think we did it at least twice, where we walked through how to set up a webhook within AppSheet. So if you're not familiar with webhooks, basically <clears throat> webhooks is like a, a relatively standard way to essentially reach out and, and call a REST service. Uh, typically you would send a post and the only difference is or like with some of the other REST services that you are expecting to essentially send the post over the wire to a, a third party's uh, REST service. 
And then that service would do some sort of an update to like the underlying data source. So you're not necessarily expecting a response directly from that REST API. So that's something that you wouldn't necessarily have directly inside of, of AppSheet. You wouldn't necessarily be able to call, say, like, like in AppMaker or AppScript, you can use URL fetch and then you can, you know, send out a post or a get and then have a response coming back. And then if the response is in JSON, you can go through and then parse through that. So the, the way it works with AppSheet, you can set up the webhook and then the webhook can plug in any kind of additional logic to then make an update to say a persistence object like a database where you're making making some updates by which then the app sheet application can then benefit from those updates based off of this webhook. Um, like the example that I mentioned before was like I created like a, a webhook that calls an app script do post function which would then go through and then query the directory API and then take the result of that query and stuff it into a database that is also linked to an app sheet uh, application that is kind of connected to that. Um, also on that same example, the, the next point kind of comes in handy. It's like there, um, there's not necessarily a, uh, a way to set up like a OAuth, um, like a generic or third-party OAuth secured REST service in app sheet, uh, or at least for today, they're still, you know, still looking at it. Um, but the recommendation today is to use essentially API keys. Now, there are ways that you can send an API key over the request to, say, uh, an app script to do post function. But if you're talking to app script directly, one thing that you may or may not know is that you can't actually parse HTTP headers. HTTP headers are not accessible for an app script from a do post function, but you can re uh, access the request arguments directly. Um, it's different, though, with uh, Google Cloud Functions, though. So Typically, uh, and I was potentially going to show an example of this, but cr you can create a Google Cloud function that can serve as the endpoint uh, from a webhook that you might uh, trigger from your AppSheet application. You can then encode any particular arguments or API keys that you've set up and send it over the wire in the HTTP header to a Cloud function and then parse it through. Now, I should also kind of emphasize the API key is still kind of your own, uh, it would be of your own design. and so. From a level of security standpoint, they're okay, but you would still want, uh, if you really need to have like a fully secured system, you'd want to start to kind of uh, approach something that OAuth gives you in that sense. Well, OAuth is definitely one uh, option, I would say. Um, there's a lot of different security options, but a straight API key is pretty good, pretty good security, but it's not, not necessarily the best. Um, and then also another point, AppScript does, or at least AppMaker can take advantage of a uh, certain OAuth library that's written in AppScript that, to do those kind of things. Um, but at least with AppSheet's approach, it actually doesn't really get into all the plumbing, so to speak, uh, for these types of calls to third-party services. The, ph the philosophy with AppSheet is to essentially pre-connect um, or at least have the plumbing already available in AppSheet such that you can make calls to other third-party services. So for example, you can connect to Salesforce or you can even set up like OCR connections. And so in this sense, under the covers, you're, you're already doing these like kind of interesting integration where you're calling out like a REST service to evaluate like an image and then have the results coming back into your UI. So you don't even have to worry about that stuff. So that's kind of speaks to the no code approach uh, for building out kind of like fairly, um, uh, I would say, in, you know, interesting types of apps that do some uh, fairly advanced things like uh, machine learning, AI, or OCR, things like that. All right, hopefully I explained that without getting too uh, lost in the weeds, but yeah, feel free to clarify anything as well uh, from your side, Jennifer. All right, sounds good. Um, I think we are great on that. Okay. <laughs> I'll move on and then I'll hand it over to Jennifer. Um, so, so yeah. Perfect, and I'm actually happy to touch on these, Christian. Um, so as mentioned previously, we have a number of resources to help um, you all during this transition time while you either evaluate AppSheet as a potential solution for AppMaker or begin your migration from AppMaker to AppSheet. Um, so listed on this resource page, and we can certainly make this available our help center and documentation, um, that's something that I personally work on uh, quite a bit. So if you find that you're having difficulty finding an answer to your question, please feel free to either post in the community or reach out to me directly and I'm happy to um, help find or source that uh, documentation for you or build it. That, that's entirely a possibility. Um, AppSheet support is available for you right now as well. Um, our creator community, which I've mentioned a few times, and actually, uh, Christian, would you click on that link I, I think it's really valuable to highlight. If you click on the AppSheet Creator community link, um, 
just if you haven't had a chance to stop by, I can't encourage you enough um, to do engage with this group of people. I know that there has been previously an app maker user forum. And this is a slightly different uh, variation of that. Uh, both were very active. This has a lot of individuals to assist each other um, in solving problems. Our staff, including myself, are also very active on this. And it's a great way uh, to get something like a how-to question, for example, in front of a number of eyes so that if our support queue uh, can't get back to you quickly enough, there's a number of other individuals here who can help. It also provides a great a diverse thought um, pool to pull from. Uh, what's unique about our community is they have a lot of different interpretations on how to use one particular feature or function. And we've seen some really incredible work done here. And so we also we often reference what our community has done and created when helping individuals reach solutions for things that they're trying to accomplish. So invaluable resource here. I highly recommend uh, you check it out. Uh, and Christian, if you'd like to go back to the previous slide, thank you so much for, for pulling that up. Um, as mentioned previously, we have a portfolio of AppMaker templates that we've reproduced in AppSheet as sample applications. Uh, we can again make this resource available for you, but it's free to use. Uh, if you find an application that you like or would like to try to reproduce, you are more than welcome to copy uh, that application and get under the hood, really poke around and see how it compared not only to AppMaker, but how uh, you could start using it for yourself or um, go ahead and just see the data structure, I think is the most important takeaway from this and uh, to be able to really get a feel for how AppSheet works and functions. Uh, and then lastly, we do have a transition guide webpage that we put together that um, overall um, can talk you through, you know, how to one-on-one -on -one onboard quickly with AppSheet, which is where the Udemy course comes in, which is a free learning resource that's self-served uh, that you can use. Uh, this transition guide also contains information on pricing, different devices, acts, acts, excuse me, points in the direction of important resources as well. So all of these are made available um, for you to use and leverage during this time. And I mentioned this previously, but please do not hesitate to reach out to anyone on the team. Um, we'll assist you the best that we can. Uh, so Christian, I've got a, a few questions from the audience that um, I'd love to, to throw at you or myself, uh, unless you have any final points you wanna touch on for that resource page. Uh, no, I think I'm fine. I think, yeah, we, just, we can just have, we jump <laughs> jump into the questions and uh, I'll, you know. All take, right, but, uh, perfect. Um, so we've got a question about um, photos, and the question is, I see the employees' photos are uh, referenced as URLs. Where is static data stored? Uh, with AppMaker, I can upload to Google Drive. Um, would you like to take a stab at that first, and then I'm happy to add any additional information? Yeah, so this is something that I remember playing with this, uh, like one of the first times I was playing with that app sheet directly. So if you build like a spreadsheet, and then you have like a photo, like column, um, you AppSheet, first off, you'll find out that AppSheet does provide ability to actually upload your photos into a um, into the application itself without having to take the extra step of say setting up say uh, Google Storage or Google Drive or whatever. What what you'll see under the covers is that the the actual photos themselves and and feel free to jump in because uh, I now I'm, I'm wondering if I should go back and just re review it really quickly. But um, it'll actually store that in your 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 source directory or your your so like. For example, every time you build an AppSheet app, it's going to create like a a, a drive uh, folder, and it'll have like the, the essentially your underlying spreadsheet, and then any kind of related types of uh, images, I believe. And uh, so you'll see that it will get stored there locally in the Google Drive. Um, I'll probably double check that just to make sure, but that's one thing that's a little bit of convenience. But then once you like you know have the app up and running, you know it's still good. You know the pictures will render for you, or as well as your your end users, providing uh, you also have set it up such that other people can view those images. Uh, right, and I'm I'm happy to um, add some additional context onto that. So I think it's important to uh, frame this in, with the fact that AppSheet was acquired by Google in January, and so there's not um, the full integration hasn't taken place yet. That being said, AppSheet previously had and still does to this day, it's built to work um, in conjunction with Google where essentially AppSheet is a layer on top of the data that Google holds. And so things like the URL for your photo, for example, that live in your Google Drive or um, you know wherever you may be storing your information in Google, um, that will feed directly to AppSheet within, uh, to help run your application. 
So I think it's really important to emphasize that your data does not live in AppSheet. Your data lives in your data source, and AppSheet simply leverages the data through the calls that Christian was speaking to speaking about earlier um, to help display information, whether that be uh, a video or a, a GIF or um, your image for, for what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I was also just, while you were discussing, I pulled up one of the um, the guides here for AppSheet where it's actually titled Displaying Images and Documents, and it goes through and explains essentially like uh, kind of uh, behind the scenes uh, where like the images and stuff like that. So whether it's the URL or the actual like file itself, um, we can also, you know, point you to that that particular article that goes through in a little bit more detail. But, but I would also recommend you can play with it fairly easily and, and get a pretty good idea of how it works. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> great. So I have uh, another question on one-to-many relations. Um, how do, so the mm -hmm. question essentially is how do one-to-many relations work? And Christian, we touched on relations earlier. Um, if you want to take a stab at it, go for it. Yeah, so I, I understand this can be a little bit confusing. Um, so if you recall with, with AppMaker, essentially you have the ability to set up your relations. You have that literal, that literally you have that UI where you can say, I'm going to essentially connect two data models. I'm going to set up the relation such that, you know, um, one to many, many to many, one to one. And then once you set up that relation, you have what is called a relation data source that you can then um, encode in your UI. So when I showed the AppMaker app where I had like the, the parent, uh, records, like for ex my example, it was like department. As I clicked on the different department records, uh, it was able to drive what gets shows up in the, the related table beneath that. And the way that was working was because I created the relationship first, but then I was able to go in the UI and specify the, the table such that it was uh, not drawing from the default data source, but from a special data source that gets created when you create a relationship called the relation data source. And that that's, filters it down to just the records that are uh, linked to that particular record. Now, with AppSheet, conceptually, it's still essentially the same. Um, and so I, I, I mentioned, like, for example, when I had the employee and department example, first of all, I... Um, I, I first generated the app, but then I the first pass, it went through and it created a table based off of the employee table. And it had a particular um, column that was uh, called DEPT or D-E-P-T. And the type of that column was number. It wasn't anything special. And so all it was doing was just reading, oh, this is a number. That's fine. And AppSheet will just take care of it. But when I went back and I added another table, like the DEP, the department table, it was then able to say, oh, I see relationship has been, uh, makes sense here because I have these columns set up such that, that I already have like a column referring to the name of the related table, the depth that is. I'm going to go ahead and set up the relationship, change the data type to ref. So it's a reference now to that uh, data table, uh, that other table, the department table. And then at the same time, I'm going to create essentially a reverse uh, linkage from that department table back to the, the main table. And that was of type list. I could probably show you. Uh, well, anyway, we, we can discuss it in more detail. But basically, it does kind of that uh, reference linking uh, automatically if you want to. Alternatively, you could also do it manually, meaning like you could define two tables on their own. And then you say, hey, I want for one record of this table here, I want to show multiple records on this side. How do I do that? Well, I go through, I create a column in that dependent table. I set the, the name of the column to be the name of the parent table. And then I set the column to be ref type. And then it will start to uh, connect the data. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially it. Hopefully that, that gets you at least enough to get starting. Uh, there's some pretty good docs and examples that you'll see uh, out there as well. But, um, but yeah, feel free to let me know if there's still some confusion there. Yeah, and we'd be happy to, um, there's a thread started in the community, as I mentioned earlier, that we'll be posting a recording of this session in, and I'd be happy to post um, support documentation there for subjects such as this, uh, if anyone would like further clarification. Um, thank you, Christian, for answering that. Uh, so I have a question about Zapier integration, um, and I'm happy just to answer this quickly. Uh, yes, AppSheet does work um, for zaps to your apps, as we call it, which I know is very cheesy and kitschy, but uh, you can, there is the ability to integrate with uh, Zap, uh, Zapier. Uh, great. So we have just a couple of minutes left, and there is... Let's see, I'm gonna tackle one last one um, just because I think it's important to emphasize. Uh, we talked about this at the top of the webinar, um, but I just wanna make it very clear. So 
for your plans, um, because of the deprecation of AppMaker, um, AppSheet is offering free pro plans um, plus access to your Google Cloud SQL instance at no additional charge. It's all included in your G Suite subscription already. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us. I think is this Ga Gabrielle? Um, please feel free to reach out to us if you don't already have your promo code uh, to be able to set that up and we'd be more than happy to ensure that you're off and running um, shortly. Uh, so with that, I wanna thank everyone. Oh, I just had a real quick comment on that point. Yeah. And we, we touched on this before. It's like it, it opens up access, um, but you'll still pay for the Cloud SQL instance unless there's anything new that popped up recently. But uh, right, that's and that's all within your your G Suite subscription. Um, so there's no no additional charge for what we're offering in, ter in terms of the AppSheet Pro plan. And um, Gabriel and, and a few others who've asked about pricing, um, that transition guide web page that we showed earlier does really emphasize uh, or does talk through uh, the plan and pricing availability um, for this uh, very special case. Um, so again, thank you everyone for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your time. Uh, we hope everyone is staying safe um, and I am more than happy to answer any questions. Again, my name is Jennifer. Um, you can reach out to me on the community. I am all over it uh, and I'm happy to help where I can. Christian, thank you for your assistance during this time as well. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you on this and everyone, we hope to see you on the board soon. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot.